Hey everyone, today is Tuesday, June 18th, and we are in week 24 of Quest 52 by Mark Moore. That means we're almost halfway through the year, which is crazy. This week's overall question is, what do we need from Jesus? And Ralph Judd preached about that on Sunday. Today's prompt has this question for us. Read 1 Samuel 18, 1 through 4, 19, 1 through 7, and all of chapter 20. How did Jonathan demonstrate loyalty to David? You may be wondering how this ties into Ralph's sermon, uh, but remember the week is all about discussing what we need from Jesus, and there are just about a gazillion answers to that question, uh, as Ralph said on Sunday. So some of those answers, like loyalty, should be reciprocated by us, and Mark Moore talked about that in his commentary about this week's content. So today's question, however, is all about Jonathan's loyalty to David. So let's get into it. Chapter 18 of 1 Samuel. The first few verses tell us that there was a very strong bond between the two young men. Verse 1 says, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. He also made a covenant with him and gave him his robe, tunic, sword, bow, and belt. Notice it doesn't tell us that David gave Jonathan anything, but even if he did, this reminds me of one of Mark Moore's key points from the chapter. He said that about our loyalty to Jesus, it should be driven by who he is and not what we can gain from him. At the start of chapter 19, we see that King Saul ordered Jonathan and any and all attendants to kill David, but Jonathan showed more loyalty to David than his own father by warning David of this plot, telling him to hide and then speaking to Saul in David's defense, so that David could return to his duties without fear of this plot, even though we know afterwards Saul goes back on his promise. Chapter 20 starts with a conversation between David and Jonathan, as David is still trying to escape Saul's plot against him. Jonathan first thinks that nothing has changed since he spoke in David's defense, but David insists that he is in grave danger. We see Jonathan's great loyalty again in verse 4, where instead of further arguments or questions about what happened, he simply tells David, whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. Then David effectively says, hey, you made a covenant with me and God, and if I'm guilty, if I'm in the wrong here, you can kill me yourself. But, of course, Jonathan refuses, and they continue to form a plan for Jonathan to help David. And he even makes another covenant with David and his house in verse 16, insisting that he is not deceiving his friend, but honoring their bond. Now, if you know the story, you know Saul did still want David dead, and Saul even gets murderously angry with his son Jonathan when he tries to speak in David's defense again. Jonathan is so grieved by this that he doesn't even eat in the second day of the feast that's going on at this time. He still demonstrates loyalty to David over his father by following through on their plan and honoring his covenant. He gets word to David that David has to flee, at which David bows before Jonathan and they weep together as they say their goodbyes. But before they go their separate ways, verse 42, Jonathan says, Go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me, and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Honestly, guys, it's been quite a while since I read this story in 1 Samuel, and I had forgotten just how strong of a bond Jonathan and David had together. What a prime example of loyalty, even with broken people. But I think that because God was part of their covenant, it's not Jonathan, but God himself who gets the real credit for working through this man to keep David alive and using this story to teach believers about loyalty even today. We know that Jesus has, and still does, an even better job of demonstrating loyalty to his people and what he has accomplished for all the world, even knowing that we are literally incapable of staying as perfect promise keepers in this life. He still loves us, and he is always ready to honor his side of the covenant and work with us for our spiritual growth and to grow our bond with him. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions you may have on 
this prompt today or Quest 52 in general, we would love to hear your thoughts. So please comment your thoughts on the passage as well. I want to pray for us before we close our time together today. Dear God, you are just so amazing. We praise you and thank you for the fact that you have not changed and you are still the same God who protected David through Jonathan and you honored your own part of the covenant they made between each other and you. Lord, I ask that you would help us in our efforts to honor you and bring you glory, devoting our lives to your kingdom rather than any sort of kingdom we could build for ourselves. Give us the perseverance and the wisdom to demonstrate true loyalty to you over all other bonds to anything on earth. We love you, Lord. And I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Friends, as always, until we see each other again, you are sent.